is up? What is up? Assalamu alaikum, peeps. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. What's good with it? This is your host, Musa Azakar, man. Bring you that heat like I always do. Like I always do, consistently. Early in the morning, afternoons, evenings, I'm bringing you that Mickey Ficky heat for your device. So please like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You will be left in the loop every time. Your boy drop it like it's hot. Well, you know, I guess I'm a revolutionist far as loving my people, getting my people to start loving each other. And you know, I have my I have my ways too. You know, everybody ain't perfect. I ain't gonna sit up before you and be like, I'm black power this, I'm black power that, and I have no flaws. Every man got their flaws. <laughs> Trust me, and I got mine. But I love to see the unity that, that we share amongst each other when we practice it and we live it, you know what I'm saying? Every other nation do so. But we have this. You ever have, you ever know how you have uh, two same magnets? You know, you try to put them together and they repel like a motherfucker. Or like I said, like a motherfucker. <laughs> we have a problem with the being a just got to show out all the time instead of being a bigger man and just, all right, you win. You win this verbally audio uh, debate uh, showing your masculinity or you win that. We can't do that. We just got to match fire with fire, don't we? That's us. You know it. If you a jock or whatever and you got a click behind you or beside you, got some nice women, how the hell are you gonna respond in a situation like that. You gonna do you all day. It's gonna come out. Man, last week, I got turned on to these brothers, man. And they are some professors. And man, they be dropping some heavy knowledge. And you may disagree with some of their uh, views too, but it's always good to hear other people's perspectives. That way, you can know exactly where they're coming from instead of just throwing out your truth or whatnot. But it's always good to, to, to get to feed the brain, especially on opinions. And you, you should always, shouldn't be so closed-minded and just stay one way. You should always venture out. You know, that's just me. But before I cook on these brothers' content, man, it's so lovely. I want y'all to subscribe today. Their stuff too. Uh, Blogging Heads TV. But it is with uh, Glenn Lowry and John. Uh, let me see here. It's not letting me see the whole. But these are professors. John McWhorton, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not going to say mistaken, I got to see the whole name before I. And those are Glenn Lowry. McWater, there we go, M-C-W-H-O-T-E-R, McWater. And man, they drop it like it's hot on this one. But look, before I get into this, let me go ahead and read this copyright disclaimer so they won't be hating. You know how people be hating, you can't be doing it on TV like that. You can't be doing it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allows me for fair use for public criticism, comment, news, report, and teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use used to be made by a copyright statute that may otherwise be infringing non-profit, non-profit educational person used to balance in favor of fair use. So I went to that blur like a motherfucker, you feel me? Uh, uh, so let's go ahead and click on this. And this particular topic, and this so is what I was talking about. We gotta have that badass, I'm the shit, motherfucker, nigga, fuck you, nigga, nigga, fuck you, who the fuck are you, nigga, 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 nigga. We had that complex. We don't? But check out game, though. Check out game. It's some deep shit. You know, it's this redneck Tom Sowell point 
that I tend to avoid because I don't know what to do with it, which is in the black community, there is a value placed on being a badass motherfucker. Some of this is that a critical mass of people salute these men for the resistance. The idea being that that's the black thing. You don't put up with any shit. I don't know what to do with that. Um, does it come from hillbilly culture? Probably. Do Are there cultural differences among people? Yes. And that clearly is an element in the water in black culture. Crazy motherfucker. Okay. You know, Richard Pryor in the benign sense. But then it comes out with this business of resisting arrest and people saluting it as an, an indication of your masculinity, that you're, you're kind of saluting black oppression in the past. Are we supposed to say that black men need to get over that? And then the question is, would there be a point? It's kind of like saying that people need to stop using the N-word as a term of affection. You, know, you, can have a, you can have a nice panel about it, but it's not. I remember when I was talking to a black audience in D.C., and I was suggesting that you know, this business of going to pieces every time somebody uses the N-word, one way that we might get past that is to just stop going to pieces and have the pride to understand that some word cannot make us cry. And it wasn't a tough session, but one black guy said, well, I hear what you're saying, brother, but, you know, I'm a tough motherfucker. I like to get up and get angry. And he stood up and the whole room starts clapping, especially the women. And I get it. I like, I, I understand the humor. I understand the cultural strain. You know, I'm not that deracialized. But the other side of that is something like Ahmaud Arbery trying to take the gun. Or, I, I won't, I, I've already said it, Dante Wright trying to jump into the car instead of just standing there and taking what he was about to be given. I, I, he shouldn't have been killed, but still. And if we're just, if, we're, if the idea is going to be it's the proper black thing to resist and how dare you kill somebody when they do it, there's just nowhere to go from there. And yet I can tell part of it is the idea that to be a soul, to be, to resist arrest is to be a soldier, that that's what somebody with balls does. That's the black thing to do. He's not some namby pamby white guy who just says, yes, officer. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know whether there's any point in saying that something should change i'm not a badass motherfucker clearly and so i'm certainly not the one who's going to say stop acting like one i don't know what to do with it but clearly it's part of it it's the black guy's thing to resist well john, i don't know uh, i'll tell you i'm working on the memoir i really am john i'm trying to catch up with you maybe if my book sells more than the sum of your books have sold i will feel like i have pulled even with you i'm praying i'm praying <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I am in the grips of writing the, the memoirs. So here's one thing that I've discovered about myself. And this is by way of uh, supporting what you just said about badass motherfuckers. So in the 1980s, I got into trouble with cocaine. I got into trouble with an extramarital affair. I was in the habits of roaming the streets of inner city Boston, Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, buying drugs, hooking up, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The most benign of it was playing chess until three o'clock in the morning on the street corner with a guy called Eddie, uh, who uh, used to make his living by selling little trinkets off of a tabletop in front of a Korean greasy spoon. Me and Eddie were buddies and he loved to play chess. He loved to play five minute chess and we'd get out there and we'd play. But that was the most benign of it. I was hanging in the hood with my peeps. I'm a professor at Harvard hanging in the, you know, 35 years old, hanging in the hood with my peeps, 37 years old, 40 years old, hanging in the hood with my peeps because I was a badass motherfucker because I could negotiate a seminar room over in Cambridge at the Kennedy School of Government on by day and a housing project where just about anything you wanted could be purchased for a price by night. And no one was the wiser. I was a badass motherfucker. I was like Superman. I would go into that telephone booth and I put on my <laughs> uniform cock my hat to the side, pull my collar up, get my walk together, get my slang, my cold switching thing, you know how it is. And I could hang, I could hang. I was authentically black. John, you wrote a book with that title. I was authentically black because I could hang in the hood. Now how fucked up was that? Okay, that's, that's why y'all need to buy the memoir. 
W.W. Norton and Company, spring of 2022. <laughs> How messed up was that? So I am familiar with the syndrome. All right. I, I know what you're talking about. It's a disaster is what I have to report from my own experience. It is an absolute disaster. Suppose I had been gunned down. I was robbed several times at gunpoint in these years over there on the streets of Boston. Suppose I had lost my life to some trigger happy, uh, coked up idiot trying to get the $20 out of my pocket. It could have easily happened. What a tragedy that would have been. What a waste that would have been. Right. So important to me was my sense of continuity with my life from Chicago in the 1950s and the 1960s. That once I had become a tenured professor at Harvard, indeed the first African-American to hold the position of tenured professor of economics in that university's history, I was willing to throw it all away just to have the internal sense of authenticity that came from being a badass motherfucker. Now, here's what I'm here, to, I'm, I'm here to tell you. It is a deep and profound problem in our culture. I'm talking about African-Americans, this tendency. It should be opposed. It should be renounced. It should be denounced. It should be called out for what it is. There, there's no glory in it. Now, you think this is politics? You think you're representing the, the angst of your enslaved ancestors? This is idiocy. It's infantile. It's a mistake. And yet, see, this stuff is so hard. You know, Orlando Patterson talks about this as the cool My good friend, and he's, he's right. And I have seen, you know, self-appointed, you know, guardians of the race saying that he's just making all that up. You know, the, the strategy is that, well, it's more complicated than that. But of course, nobody ever explains the nature of the complexity. But obviously, there's that's there. And it's not as if black men in the United States start the century are the only people who became dominated by that idea. You can see that in the history of many people, including the Irish, including Italians. You can see it in people other than black people today. Good point. But it is a problem. And I find it highly likely that an awful lot of black people deep down like it. it they think of it as swagger. They think of it as our way of dealing with a bad hand. And unfortunately, that thing gets a lot of people killed. And that kind of person hears me say that, and they jump and say, the person didn't deserve to die. We agree, folks. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm human. I know the person shouldn't have died. But the point is, if only he hadn't resisted, he would still be alive. But there's no room for that point. We are in such a fucked up place here in 2021 about race. Worse in many ways than it's ever been because so much of this stuff is based on lies <laughs> and self-indulgence masquerading as science and morality. And I am genuinely frustrated this month in particular because it's beginning to be clear to me that we can call this a conversation. And we're, we're heard, and we're not being muzzled. It's not that anybody's keeping us from saying what we're saying. Not, not, nothing of the sort. But we're, what we're saying is always going to be kind of a minority taste. We're heterodox. It's not going to be what the people out there are thinking. It's not going to stop these street protests based on a lie. Maybe that's as good as it gets. Maybe we're expecting too much. We are heard. And I'm very gratified by it, by a great many people, and it is not just white conservatives. That every time you have this mob out on the street and the New York Times writing the usual piece, I just think to myself, this is never going to change. It Yo, I want you to subscribe to this channel. It's uh, bloggingheads.tv and uh, Glenn Lowry and John uh, McWhorter. Subscribe to they shit. They got that motherfucking flame. You feel me? But it's your boy Isaac Carr, man. I gotta get ready for the plantation. And I'll holler at y'all later on. Peace. And I'm about to have Greek, baby.